afternoon, of course, uh, it is Thriving in Abundance Talk. You are welcome this afternoon. May I ask Apostle Gunene to open for us in prayer. This afternoon, praise God. Uh, thank you, Sister Zodora. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you this afternoon that you are present here with us. And we believe, oh God, that your anointing and your wisdom, oh God, will be transmitted through the airways. And the Lord of lives will be touched, restored, and repositioned. Father God, we thank you that there will be great wisdom and revelation that will be transmitted. Oh, and yes. we bless you, oh God, that this platform has been Lord. created by you, and you have orchestrated this day long before we yes, even born. And we thank you, yes. oh God, that it has come to fruition today. Thank you, Lord. And we are glad in thank your you, presence. Jesus. In thank Jesus' you. mighty name, Father, we pray. Amen. 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 Of course, my name is Zotom Simangansiband, and I am your host this afternoon. It's a thriving in abundance talk. Namshanje Gentambama, I have the pleasure of hosting Baba, Apostle Manda Gunene, Ogumpatila Paya, Epochem Christian Center, and of course, my good brother, Baba. Usimpiwe Majola, who is a part of the Light of Family Center. Gentlemen, good afternoon. Um, demand yeah. this afternoon. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Good afternoon. Yes. Uh, maybe let me just take this opportunity to apologize uh, to our viewers that we started a few minutes late. Technology is technology. Everybody understands that as we are now doing most things virtually. Uh, so in technology sometimes even amalim ayonje that sometimes there is nothing much we can do about it but ogu balulegile is that we are here and we are live and we have gone to have um, a wonderful time this this afternoon uh, maybe let me start by giving you an opportunity to introduce yourselves a uh, gentleman um uh, uh, where you are where you come from uh. thank you uh, i'm smk all the way from mayaton a very cold place. Uh, people are saying everywhere where the DA is in power, it's very cold, like in Cape Town. So even here, we've got the DA, and it is it is it is, it is extremely cold. Uh, but mm -hmm. one thing good about the place where we are at is that God is alive here, he, like Amen. in any other place. And uh, we we bless God that we 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 are part of the great awakening and the shaking that God is Ale doing even even through you as a midwife sister that you have placed us here today so that we should uh, ride on your wings and touch lives which we wouldn't be able to touch if it were not of this platform and Ale we we do counseling we we do marriages we do coaching we do leadership seminar and and there's a lot that is on our plate and uh, we believe that god is using us in our own corner to transform lives and we are grateful also to our home the assemblies of god which crafted a jewel in me uh will be forever thankful and boast that i'm a child of the aog and they have made me who i am god bless you amen amen for that introduction beautiful shout out to assemblies of god uh, Babu Machola, Matungwan, Chola. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Let's hear from Praise you, Baba. Lord. Well, it's an honor and a privilege, Sissy, to be on this platform. God bless you and increase you. Yeah, Thank my you. name is Kwe Machola from Lights of Life Ministries, based here in Pine Town, New Germany area. Just focusing on this word to be the light in the yeah. world. That's the mission that God has given us. We are equipping and training believers, and we are on this journey to fulfill the word of God. Uh, our vision is to transform a dark world uh, with the light of life through the demonstration of God's infallible truth. And that's uh, our, our work okay. of God. Bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. From darkness to light. <laughs> yes. There's a song that we used to sing when we were growing up. It's walk in the light. Walk. 
Oh, oh yes, I remember those days, eh? Oh, the light. Oh, the light of God. Thank you so much uh, for that introduction, gentlemen. All right, so we're handling um, an interesting topic um, around spiritual parents. Um, who are having a conversation. And I'm saying, I grew up in the Lutheran church where I had um kokeli. <laughs> so now I am, um, you know, sort of moving in different um, uh, spaces and I hear this concept of uh, spiritual parents. Um, is, is, is that what it is? Uh, let, me, let me start with you, um, Demande. Is uh, 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 spiritual parents a similar thing as abakokeli? Yeah, yes, Zoto. I think one thing that people should understand is that we need to give a definition of what that means. Like yeah. we were talking earlier on that there is nothing called spiritual parenting. It, ah. is, parenting, it is parenting on different levels. Okay. Because yeah, people should, under, should understand we are using the term spiritual parenting for lack of a better word, but I believe that it's limiting the function of the people above the right to nature people who are found ah. in a religious environment. So people must understand there is parenting. So whether okay. it's at school, it's at home, is is at work, is in the community, is in the nation, is you 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 know like like when we talk of the church, whether it's in the church where there is nurturing, then parenting is part of the game. So, om kokeli eludaren, you see that, om vangeli, and all these these titles missing or Amazon doing, you see that when they were doing the nurturing duty, actually yeah. they were doing pastoral work, and that's parenting. Ah, so yes, yes. Okay, all right. So, 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 so. In other words, uh, if I'm hearing you correctly, um, Demande, it does not necessarily have to be a pastor. It can be any other person that is responsible for the nurturing, as you are saying, in a church environment. Is that what it definitely, is? Definitely, okay. def okay. definitely, definitely. Definitely. Right. And, and, and one other thing that, that has been a confusing thing, people yeah. think that the person who led you to Christ, yeah. that's a spiritual parent. That, and oh. that's not true. No, 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 Is that's that... not true. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Because you see, we, we've got to understand this. It's like in the natural, there are mm -hmm. men who are able to donate their sperm cells. That does not make them fathers. And, and there are women who donated their eggs, you, you see, to infuse, you, you know, with the sperm cells, but that's not parenting. All right. They just All donated right. the seed and the egg and a child came out. But the people who raised the child, who nature the child, those are the parents. That is why most of the time at home, the people who raise the children are the grannies. So the parent is the granny, but the biology is what you call mother or daddy. So there's a difference between biology and parenting. So even Nagu Gamoy, there's a difference between the biology of bringing a person to Christ and the actual nurturing, the parenting of the person to, to fruition and growth and majority. Ah, you know, a few weeks, I think two weeks ago, we were uh, tackling the, the, the challenge of um, e, uh, Obaba that are absent uh, because obviously we're in men's month in, in, mm -hmm. in children's lives. So would you perhaps say that then when you, um, you lack a biological father, uh, whether because I, I, he doesn't play a role or because maybe he chooses not to play a role or maybe yeah, they've departed. So when we get into a church environment, um, the, the, the people that will be nurturing you in the church environment, those are the people that you can call your spiritual parents. And, and those people, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, we, we pay taxes on. You, you see, this, though this is a vast thing, and I, I'm glad that you brought this topic be, yeah. because it has got issues that finally put deletion and as well as and all those things. Yet yeah. at the same time, we cannot overemphasize its importance. Yeah. The truth, the truth of the matter, I'll repeat again. When yeah. a person donated his sperm cells and yeah. it resulted into conception and a baby was born, yeah. that person is not a father, he is your biology. Biology. But the, pers yeah, but the person who raises you, it can be an uncle, it can be your grandfather, it can be a pastor in church, it can be parents whom you meet with in church who are not even pastor. You see that? That person becomes a father, a parent, and, okay. and, and the relationship that is built, you, you know, the journey that they are going along together, yeah. it was a nurturing and infuses the bond with your relationship. Okay, all right, okay, perfect. Uh, uh, let me come to you, Matungwan. Oh, praise the Lord. It's a similar question. Uh, hmm. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, very true, man of God. I think when I received this uh, topic, uh, I knew that there are many things out there, <laughs> descriptions of spiritual parents. So I just went straight to the word and wanted to be very safe on this one because yeah. people are very different with regards to this uh, topic or definition of this, uh, what you called uh, spiritual parents. So yeah. I look at the word, uh, or maybe look at it based on the word spiritual, mm -hmm. word, spiritual parents. Uh, in the book of John or first John chapter two, mm -hmm. uh, from verse 12 to 14, I think we do get some definition there. When yeah. John says, I write unto you fathers, actually speaks more of uh, yeah. spiritual maturity. I don't think it's much predicated on gender, but it actually speaks of spiritual maturity. Mm -hmm. I write unto you fathers because you have known him from the beginnings, talking about God. You have mm -hmm. known God from and that word known in Greek is the word ginosko, which mm. means to know, which means to understand, which means to participate on that which you know until you become it. So actually, uh, uh, Google, oh, a spiritual father is becoming one with God. It means uh, with God in such that there's no more difference between you and God. That's what Christ was doing to the disciples. That's why yeah. I will say of I in you and you in me being one. So when we talk of spiritual parents, we are talking about people who, who are naturalists, uh, spiritually who are a covering, who plays a covering role who, who brings uh, growth to a child to where you come to be, uh, uh, you, you come into the stature of Christ. Uh, there are many examples of uh, spiritual fathers. Uh, maybe as we continue, one will name a few, but one of them whom we know in the New Testament was Paul, Paul mm. the Apostle. So I'm yeah. just going to be, yeah, <laughs> focusing on that, you, 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 you must have the experience. You must have experienced God to be a father. Actually, uh, when you look deeper, uh, you do really need to come to a point where you reach oneness with Christ. I don't think there's anyone who qualifies uh, to call him a spiritual Especially my spiritual parents, if according to the word of God, if you have not uh, attained or reached oneness with Christ. Thank you. 
Okay, that's actually very interesting. That's a, that's an interesting mm. concept. Oneness with Christ. Uh, what's yeah. that? Because there could be someone who is viewing uh, us or um, uh, uh, right now as we are live on, on Facebook, and then people who will be watching um, this later, and they'll be like, "Okay, yeah. I wonder what does that mean? He oneness with Christ." I'm also curious. Uh -huh. No, Jesus mm -hmm. said uh, to his disciples, "Follow me." Ah. In other words learn from me and you okay. also see Paul in first Corinthians <coughs> one uh, saying imitate me as I imitate Christ or follow me as I follow <coughs> Christ you actually become a learner or a disciple of someone you learn from him you grow from towards becoming like that person up until you are like him. In other words, he imparts to you <coughs> what he is. Yes, he imparts who he is to you. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. All right. And uh, the assumption here is that uh, the things that um, they will impart are definitely Christ like. It, it, you know, because sometimes yes. you hear stories and you're like, oh, okay, oh, really? In church? Oh, Abbasaloane, <laughs> Haibo, where are we? <laughs> anyway, yes. coming back to our question, thank you, thank you so much. Uh -huh. So, yeah. um, you know, also uh, the, the nurturing part, I, I understand it makes a lot of sense. What I hear you also touching on uh, is the experience. Mm. It's the experience. Mm. So, so, so now when you touch on the experience and I'm thinking, okay, if I'm a, a, a pastor, then like, a, you know, in a church environment, uh, if the assumption is that I'm experienced. Uh, mm -hmm. And then we were also talking about other people like, as Umtman was saying, the assumption is that they are also experienced. But it can happen sometimes that they're probably not necessarily experienced, but they are in a position of leadership. So I just want to find out in that case, because it, it, it can happen and it's possible um, that the experience is not really that much, but I, I, I already have a responsibility uh, to, 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 to do this assignment of, of nurturing people. What happens in your, or maybe in, you've seen that, um, I would imagine, in your experience, whereby, uh, 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 how, how do we, um, you know, tackle such um, in, environments or situations? Demand. Think, uh, oh, yes. Okay, th th thank you, Sisod. What, what, what an interesting issue. I, I, will, I, will, mm. I will try and connect the bits here. Okay. So, so, yeah. So, so that we we become clear of, of certain concepts here. All right. Uh, again, for the understanding of our of your view of your views. Yeah. The the key word in what we are discussing here is parenting. Parenting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I will I will I, you you will understand the people will understand as I go on. The truth mm -hmm. of the matter is being called and being in the ministry does not mean you are matured and it does not mean you have the experience okay and that is why even no mundo who is in the ministry needs a father figure like for ah. instance it's, yeah like for instance it's long i've been in the ministry there are people whom i'm fathering yet i'm also fathered because the the truth here is the anointing does not make people matured. It empowers them for works of service. <coughs> but uh, maturity in Nida Umundu, who has been there for a longer period, who have wintered and summered in life matters. That is why Nitimina saying <laughs> spiritual parenting, it, it, it's, it's because we're saying that for lack of a better word, because mm. what we call spiritual parent, they are not dealing only with spiritual matters. Take for instance, Moses and Joshua, take yeah. uh, Timothy and, 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 and Paul. Paul oh, says yeah. about Timothy, as a son, he has proven himself with the father. 
In, mm. in other words, it is not only issues of teaching people how to interpret the Bible, how to walk the Bible, but you teach them issues of emotional intelligence, issue of, of, of practical connection and engagement with the people. And those things are more practical than anything else. It's just uh -huh. that we call it spiritual parenting because the source that outsources that relationship is from a church environment or a religious environment. But the truth of the matter is the work is of a greater scope than what we think. Because the, the, the personality of this person must be dealt with. The, the, yeah. the attitude of this person must be dealt with. The yeah. emotions of this person must be dealt with. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, all right. That's quite interesting. <laughs> Emotional <Yeah>. intelligence. <laughs> you call it that too, mm. spiritual intelligence? Yes. Okay, what is that? Yes. Sp spiritual intelligence is the ability to tap into the wisdom of God through the scriptures and fellowship with him by his spirit. When you are able to do that and be able to interpret who God is to the people until they understand your relationship with him and they want to follow suit, that's spiritual intelligence. Ah, okay. Very interesting. Would you like to add something, uh, <laughs> Martin, on, on the of, of spiritual intelligence? Yes, I think that was well defined. Okay. Uh, All right. Um, <laughs> maybe to add uh, on that, you know, because of the fall, we lost the nature of God. And Christ came to restore us back to the image and likeness of God. I mean, look at Jesus. He was a father to the 12 uh, apostles or disciples. Yet he was only 30. Mm. He ended his ministry at 33 and a half or so. So mm. it, it, it really, when you look into this, you are looking at maturity uh, based on the standard of God is somebody who has had God's nature restored back to me. <clears throat> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. He is All right. God. Because there okay. were old men of that time that he, he, he called babes, children, in as far as spiritual maturity is concerned, who were mm. still behaving children, you know, and babes. So as I said, I think that's it. Yeah. So okay. So, so, so now in, in, um, like for instance, in, in business, you, you would, you would have maybe mentors and mentees and, 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 and uh, sometimes coaches, um, is, is it something similar or is this different when it comes to the church environment? Uh, if I were to come in there, yeah, yeah. the, 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 the thing is a person can have many mentors. Okay. Yeah, let's start there. You can have yeah. many mentors. You can have mm -hmm. a, a, a traveling mentor if you are a person who travels to other countries so that they make you understand the different cultures and different forms of submission and connecting with people who are outside your jurisdiction and outside your culture. Mm -hmm. and, and you need a mentor for that. You can have a... a, 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 a a mentor in spiritual issues. And sometimes a mentor is not a parent. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. A, a mentor sometimes is not a parent. Let that be clear. Like for yeah. instance, in, in, in a working environment, you don't need a parent at work, but you can need a mentor. A mentor is a person who possesses what you desire to get where you want to be. So now, because they have what you desire to get to your destiny, you yeah. follow their example. In other words, a mentor is somebody who models what you desire out of what they have. So that's a mentor. So, right. so they stretch you to another level. But a parent 
a parent it's a person who deals with you from being an infant to a crawling baby to a a a, a juvenile to a teenager to a, a a young adult and to adulthood so with a parent there is the there is a relationship that builds up throughout levels that it's based on making you the best you as God has designed you, not as they want you to be. Ah, okay. Martin, would you like to add something there on this, on this particular issue? Yes, that, that is very true. I was yeah. looking in the Hebrews 5, Paul comes, he finds believers, is coming with some stuff, but uh, that he wants to teach them, but he finds that no, they are not. Actually, how it defined it, it says, you have come to need meat, milk, not spiritual meat. In other words, there's a subject that he was bringing in, but he could see that they were not able at that time. It means they were still infants, as Baba was saying. They couldn't understand certain stuff then is to take them to that class of giving them milk till they grow into where they are able or they are capable to uh, eat meat. And uh, how it's put there, he says to them, if I can quote, mm -hmm. Hebrews chapter five, mm -hmm. uh, he said they are not ready to partake of the word of God. Mm. Uh, uh, need to be given the first principles of the oracles of God. There are mm. people who are unskillful in the word of righteousness. I know that might be a bit deep and we need more time to explain, but <laughs> Righteousness is a state when you can remember the story of Abraham. God was busy dealing with Abraham, trying to bring him to maturity. And uh, God said to Abraham, No, Abraham, look, you are going to have a son. And Abraham said, Ah, but I'm 100 years and my wife is 90. There's no way we can have a son. And he could not understand God's language up until God to help him to come out of that, you mm. know, age of state. And then he eventually came to a point he was where he was able to see what God was saying. And God declared him as righteous. So when the mm. word of God says, uh, these are the people who are still unskillful in the word of righteousness, it means they're still unable to interpret the, the speakings of God or the dealings of God. Mm. Yeah. So, 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 so you will find spiritual parents or spiritual fathers raising believers from being infants uh, mm -hmm. right to sonship and from sonship into being a father or a parent, a spiritual parent. Uh, okay. Very interesting. Thank you so much. Let me go to our Facebook page and check what our... our viewers uh, saying this afternoon. Oh, okay, quite a few comments, very interesting. Uh, Nopundo says it's an interesting discussion, of course. Uh, can Apostle unpack Ephesians 4, verse 11 to 13, uh, and perhaps Matthew 28, verse 19? In light of this morning's discussion, maybe one of you can take the other and one and the other take the other, you know. Um, it's efficient for 11 13. Would you like to take that in demand? Fine. Now, no, 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 which, which, which is, is an interesting thing. And I yeah. call that the, the gold mine of the Bible. Ah. The Scripture is the gold mine of the Bible when it comes to issues of engagement, transmission, and, and mentorship and parenting. It's okay. just infused in there. Because okay. Paul writes, Paul writes to the church, because even though we find it in, in, in the letter to the 
to the Ephesians, but it, it is for the church. Now he writes to the church and he says, Jesus is able to continue his earthly ministry through people whom he has called and made. Now, now let's underline that. He had made them to be apostles. He has made them to be prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Mm -hmm. Now, in order to understand, I've heard a lot of people, you know, they, they think these are titles of honor, and that is why they, they will give themselves great names. And, and even those people who are supposed to be pastors, they will say they're apostles, and some they will, you, you know, just in the name of a title. And I want to clear this online today, that Thank these you. are, yeah, these are not titles of honor. These are offices of function. Uh, yeah. Yes, uh. these are fun offices of function, and they all represent Christ. Now, Christ mm -hmm. cannot be greater than the other Christ. So whether you are a pastor, an apostle, a prophet, or an evangelist, or a teacher, these are equal ministries. Even when you give leadership amongst these, you are giving leadership amongst equals because you are standing in the place of Christ. Uh, okay. Yeah, Christ, who's, Christ who's an apostle, who's a prophet, who's an evangelist, who's a pastor, who's a teacher. So no one is greater than the other. They are raised to, to, to work as a team for building the church. Because these are the ministries that Jesus is using to build his church. We must understand no one of us has the power to build the church. No one has the skills to do that. It is Christ who's doing that through individuals whom he has made and put into these offices. Now, an apostle receives the blueprint. The, the, the prophet, my goodness me, the, the prophet interprets the blueprint and the evangelist proclaims the blueprint and the ah. pastor guards the blueprint and the teacher explains the blueprint. So all of them are working around a common interest that, that the blueprint should not be messed up so that the people should be built in Christ. So that is why it is important and it is, it is essential that our interpretation of that scripture should not be on issues of titles, but it should be yeah. on issues of operating in an office with a code to interpret the blueprint, which equips the people for works of service. So there is nurturing. In other words, you become a parent when you are operating in your office and nurturing the people who are given to you as an apostle or a prophet or an evangelist or a pastor or a teacher. Ah, wow, that's quite a mouthful. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. You know, I'm actually tempted to ask this question just for clarification. Who decides who becomes a, or who operates in which office? Very simple. It is Christ yeah. who makes. You cannot pray yourself into, into an office. You cannot call yourself into an office. No one can anoint another into an office like the wishy-washy madness that we see in the church today. No one can anoint a person into an office. When we anoint you, we confirm you for what Christ has done. That's what we call ordination. We do not on. We do not anoint you or ordain you to become. We ordain you to confirm what Christ has, has, has done in you. So it is Christ who makes not the church, not a person, not some wishful thinking. It is Christ. Like, oh. like, 
like in the Bible. The Bible, when you read the Bible in, in, in Acts chapter 13, the Bible says the church was in prayer and it was mm. God through his Holy Spirit who came to the believers who were praying and told them where Paul and Barnabas ought to be. So it is God who makes not the church, I repeat, not the people, not your, not your mentor, not your spiritual parent, it is Christ. Okay, thank you. That's actually quite interesting, Demanda. So if I come to you and say, Christ has said that I am now a prophetess, how, how are you going to prove? I mean, like, so how, how does it happen? What's the process? I'm, I'm just like, interested oh, there's, there is a long process it's not as easy as people say today that's oh. where your you, yeah that's where that's where your mentor comes in that's where your spiritual parent comes in okay you sit, yeah when a person comes to me and say god has called me all right i need yeah i need to sit down with them ask this question what did god say mm. yeah because we need to descend from there what yes. did God say, number, number, number two, after they have said what God has said, who are you, who are you called to? Okay. Yes. And what is the mandate? All right. Yeah. Because those things need to be clear. You, we need yeah. to know your audience. We need to okay. know your audience. We, we, yeah. we, we, Yes, we, we, we need to know your area where God is sending you. We, we, need, we need to know a lot of things. You, you, you see that? Uh, actually, if you say you are a prophet, what kind of a prophet? Because even dogs have got names. So if you say you are a prophet, what kind of a prophet? Okay. Are, you, are, you, are you an in-house prophet? Mm. Are you a, 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 a roving prophet? Mm. Are you a, a prophet who brings judgment like, mm -hmm. like Deborah? Or are you a prophet who speaks into the nation or who speaks mm -hmm. to governments or who speaks mm -hmm. to leaders or who speaks mm -hmm. to the people? What kind of a prophet are you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm finding this fascinating when demand. <laughs> and, learning, and the viewers are learning. Uh, 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 out there, this is very interesting. Um, I think maybe one will have a follow up uh, specifically on the uh, on the question of offices because I think it's important that we we break down these things and so that we can understand what it all means, especially uh, this this time where we're seeing a lot of things happening in the church. Maxim, one, would you like to also take a bite on this issue? Mm, yes, there has to be a proof. As what I was saying, uh, ministry. You can't mm. just come and say, uh, now this, you're now that, especially when it comes to the offices. Yeah. yeah. There's a level of maturity that is required. Uh, you must have said, served. You must, you should really have a mentor or a father uh, who can say, yeah, I know this. Uh, sometimes you'll find that as you're still uh, growing somebody whom God will reveal to and, and speak to you. So I see this in your life. See this ministry, God is calling you for this. And it must be that you can also observe in yourself and say, yeah, I agree with that, you know. And it's seen by how you, you do ministry and also on the things that you seem to always be concerned about. There must be some proof though before okay you can call yourself uh, something. Uh, it took time for, for even for Paul to, to be an apostle. <laughs> for three years, he went to- Definitely, yeah. definitely, definitely. He came back and submitted to the church and maybe after 14, 15 years, then he was released. Mm -hmm. uh, wow, yeah. wow. So I'm trying to add on that, Sisoto. Yes. Mm. yes. The, the thing here people should 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 understand yes. it takes time for the tree to grow after the seed has been sown onto the ground yes. 
Yes. It takes some watering, it takes some season, it takes some waiting until it is able to produce some fruit. Mm. Unfortunately, the days that we are living in, that's why we've got all these nonsensical things that are happening in the name of the church. Because mm. the people wish themselves into great offices. Mm. It's like for instance, a person will call, they will call themselves prophets. Yeah. Mm. Now, this person calls themselves a prophet to start with. They do not have the character of a, a prophet. Mm -hmm. Number two, they battle to hear God. What they do is they steal somebody's words and they exercise that for themselves. And, and they yeah. do what we, told, what we call getting into a trance and start prophesying, and, and they are called prophets. You know, confusing thing. Like first, and I can say to you, Sizoto now. You see, I, I I see a man who's not tall, who's not who's not short. You, you know, he's he's not light, he's not dark. That's confusing. What are you saying? I see this man. I you 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 know, he he wants to come, but something is stopping him. And and we will pray. We will pray for the release. You see things like that. It shows that this person is not prophesying but prophesying and and it's about time people are checked and a person cannot be an apostle Cesaro when they still struggle with issues of doctrine to start with it, when they still struggle with issues of who the church is mm. ah, you, you, okay. can, you can you yeah. can be an apostle when you're still struggling with it yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Those, are the th <laughs> those are the things that needs to be brought onto the table on a greater yeah. scale and be dealt with. Yeah, True. absolutely. For, for, for a moment, I'm excited. I see a man. <laughs> All right, this is a very interesting uh, uh, um, uh, take on, on the topic. So, you know, I, I mean, just as a matter of interest, I, I noticed that in many churches you have an apostle and then umama or prophetess. So the, it would have gone through the process that you are alluding to. Oh, yes and no. Yes and no. Oh. You, you see, yeah, it has become a trend now that that that, that becomes a title because people don't understand. Oh. Yeah, they, they don't understand. It is not always so. If they are both called into those offices, then it's it's fine. Okay. I, I don't have a problem with that. But yeah. I have a pro I have a problem when it becomes a title of honor by which they need to be presented before their followers, then I have a problem with it because God cannot equip you for something that he has not called you for. So it should be a thing of a person being called. Well, this is it's a topic for another day. Another the day. Question, <laughs> yeah, the question would be, can a called person marry a person who is not called? The answer is yes, but it is dangerous. Oh. Because the Bible says on marital issues, which also affect your ministry, your calling, it can be in business or anywhere, your calling, it, your partner needs to be a person who must be able to connect with your identity in your calling and help you in those things and partner with you in those things. Now, now that's a topic for another day, of course. I agree. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I agree. I agree, Mdimani. Let me go back to our Facebook page and just check what mm -hmm. the viewers are saying. Uh, mm -hmm. Just uh, because uh, uh, I think the lady, the, the lady who called... He also wanted uh, clarity on May 28. Oh, on May 28, yes, you are right. Yes, 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 yes. I wanted to say maybe on that one, I think he, she was inquiring, inquiring about the Great Commission. Uh, oh, yeah. That Jesus was speaking to, people that were ready. 
who have been through training. Yeah. It was not children. <laughs> they were ready to be others. They were ready to be spiritual leaders. If you can yeah. look at the example also of Moses and Joshua and Caleb. Yeah. The time came when they were about to enter Canaan, because that was the promise. Ooh. And God said, okay, send 12 able men to go and spy the land. And they came back, they came with two different reports. The turns, mm -hmm. we are not able. God said, you are able. But this one said, no, we are not able because of mm -hmm. what they said. But only these two who were ready, these two were now uh, mature people, yeah. people who could represent God's position. Right yeah. now, the challenge is uh, we are, we're having this uh, pandemic where we're yeah. hearing many different stories. Uh, even, uh, you know, as, as, as children of God, we are challenged. We are not representing the Lord. We are speaking what the word is saying, but mm -hmm. Christ mm -hmm. represents life. Mm -hmm. True. And Christ True. represents restoration. And this yeah. should be a message as the church. So now mm -hmm. when you look at people, they saw giants there. And they said, we are not able. And then God said, no, these ones are not to be my representatives. Only yeah. Josh and Caleb. We need to take a position of God. Right yeah. now, very urgent. We need to stand on who Christ is. God <coughs> now needs sons to deal yeah. with the problem who, who, yeah. which we faced with in, uh, in the whole world, actually, and in our yeah. country. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, That's quite powerful, indeed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Still on that, mm -hmm. okay. Still okay. On, the, on, on that. Just, just on a, a note on that. Yeah. The great, yeah, the great commission, Sizot, the people should understand. It is yeah. not an excitement of going to the streets and start preaching to the unsaved. Mm -hmm. That's not the great yeah. commission. People mm -hmm. must understand if you cannot keep the people, nor re nature them to, to maturity, don't go and preach to them because you're exposing them to danger. True. Yeah, so, yeah. So True. the Great Commission has compartments. First, you must be trained like the, the, the men of God said. You need to be trained so that you are sent out. Now, mm -hmm. when you go out, there's some work, there's some work. You're going to fetch raw material, and that raw material needs to go through the fire. And after the fire, it needs to be crafted and, 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 and built into something beautiful that can be put on a display. So there is a process even in the Great Commission. It's not just mm -hmm. the thing, you would think, We've got to go out there and start preaching, which we are called to do, of course. But after doing that, we need to sit down, make people disciples. The make yes. needs to be underlined. We make people disciples to become more like Jesus. Thank you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> disciples to become more like Jesus. All right. Let me just go there. Subugunene is saying all the power of oneness. Imagine being in oneness with God. You would suddenly have no reason to fear anything. It's a comment. Uh, mm -hmm. And then, uh, um, responding to Sinako, Uguba disobedient, Ngoba. Ishoga is that we have not been given the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and sound mind. We need to pursue oneness with Him indeed. Um, <laughs> and then Obab fire, of course, is saying, Ying Ako Ocha and you, Chris fire, Nabangutsu Ukuluma, Genda Bayama offices. Uh, <laughs> all right. Um, and then, oh, this Talit and I saying, what this is heavy stuff, and it's an interesting topic. Uh, all right, that's fine. Uh, I'm just like making sure that you don't miss anything important from yeah. our from our viewers out there. Uh, we've already unpacked. Um, okay, this is, uh, okay. So, all right, someone is, is talking about it, discernment there. Um, 
what is what what is the important of uh, importance of a, a discernment or what does it take to be able to discern certain things especially when it comes to the issue uh, your parenting in the church yeah uh, can i come in yeah mm -hmm. Okay, th thank you, Sister. Wow, what a question. Uh, in all the gifts that are tabulated in the book of Corinthians, which are called the charismatic gifts, yeah. uh, they, they all can operate through infants, except the gift of discernment. Okay. Yep, because discernment needs maturity of some kind, of some sort. Mm -hmm. Because if a child can be given discernment without understanding, the gift can be disastrous. So mm -hmm. it is imperative for a parent to have discernment because when you talk to your child, when you are raising your child, even at home, you are not listening to what they are saying. You listen to why they are saying what they are saying. So that when you respond, you deal with the cause of what they are saying. Because if you are not discerning, you will only deal with the symptoms and the crux of the matter won't be dealt with. So uh, it is imperative, Uguti, a parent must descend and to descend again. So we are going to you need to be one with Christ. You need to be infused with the heartbeat and the mind of Christ. And that is a process of growth towards maturity, understanding his word, being able to sift in between the voices, being able to sift in between your emotions and the spirit emotions in you. The, these things are very much important. Let's you destroy the people whom you're supposed to raise. Amen. Mm. And maybe mm. to add on that, there's a word actually over there uh, in the same book of Hebrews 5, verse 14, said, but strong meat belongs to them that are of full age. Mm -hmm. Even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern. Amen. Good Amen. evil. Amen. So, Exercise by use, by exercise. But there, there, there's a sense of you need to grow and, and come to a certain stage of maturity. It's something that just doesn't just come to you. Mm. Mm. To you must be involved. Exercise the senses, be able to know which is which, what is good, what is right. Uh, sometimes uh, <laughs> I remember the story of Baba Yul Konke. Um, there was a time when uh, the prophet, is it Agabus, came and, 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 and took a robe of Paul yep. and said, yep. this man is robe, this is what they're going to do to him. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then when believers saw that, they said, ah, oh, it means Paul mustn't go there. Paul said, no, I am going. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Paul was able to to differentiate between the two, even though that is what is going to happen to him. But at the same time, it is God's will for him to go through that. It doesn't mean he must run away. He will mm -hmm. go through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nego, just, just right there. Let's go, let's take the issue of Saul, King, 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 King of Israel, the first king of Israel. He mm -hmm. had a parent by the name of Prophet Samuel. Yes. Now, Saul is sent out to go and totally annihilate the Amalekites. Mm -hmm. yeah. He comes back, he partially obeys the instruction. And mm. he comes back with fat cows, fat sheep and, and stuff. And he thinks he's going to buy the prophet by those things and, and buy God. Because he says to the prophet, uh, 
I have done what the Lord has sent me to do. But the prophet in discerning, that's not mm. prophecy, that was discernment. Yes. He says, yes. but what is the bleating of sheep that I hear and, mm. and the lowing of, of cattle that I hear, yet you say you have done all. That was discernment at work. And, mm. and, and, and this man continues to say, no, but I did it. It's the people who said, I should bring this thing so that we should give unto God and sacrifice unto him. And that was a lie. And the prophet also descended there and said to him, don't you know that obedience is better than sacrifice? So be my good Smith, discernment of a parent when dealing with the sons or the daughters, it's very important. Yeah. Hmm. Wow. <laughs> This is actually quite interesting, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm just sitting listening and thinking, okay, if someone were to come to me and say, God has told me that I should be your spiritual parent, uh, how do I test that? Well, that, if I can come in, uh, yeah. that is something that you need to pray about. Pray it about it. Firmed in you. You must have peace with it. And... Yeah. Uh, and normally it doesn't happen that way. Okay. <laughs> normally it's you who seeks who seek a father or a, a parent, oh. and the Holy Spirit uh -huh. of God will direct you uh, okay. to that person. Yeah, but right. uh, he can't just come and say, uh, "I'm your spiritual father." No, you have to confirm everything. You have to uh, test every spirit. It's how the word of God puts it. <laughs> Put this. Okay, empty man. Yeah, no, th yeah, that's why you've seen me laughing. Th there are a lot of <laughs> things that are happening, actually. Believe me, the, the, the truth of the matter, see, see Zoto nine. Do you see what God has, has done with you and is doing with you and will continue to do with you? God, God is raising you to higher levels. And the temptation with men and women of God who see you, who get into contact with you, is that. I need to be associated with greatness. And part of being great as a parent is to be connected with a child who seemed to be great. And that's where these, these things come in. It is, is, it is not that much of God saying, I want to be your parent. It's the desire to, to embrace something that looks glorious so that I should share in the glory. Uh, as, the men, yeah, as the men of God have said, most of the time, not that it's not, it's not going to, be, to, to happen, let's, let's be clear also here, but most <laughs> of the time, the way it happens, it is the son or the daughter who comes to the father and submit, not the way, not the other way around. But oh, now, yeah. yes, yeah. But another person can ask, in the case of Jesus, it, went, it was not the disciples who came, my, my goodness me, who came to Jesus. It was Jesus who picked them up. Yes. So, yes. So it, it, it can happen like in John and his disciples, he picked them up. So it can happen that a parent can be able to pick up someone. But what you pick up, you pick raw material. Don't pick things that are already crafted, go and pick up raw material so that your footprints must be seen on them, like Jesus did, like John did, like Elijah did. You see that? Pick up raw material and imprint your, your, your footprints. When, when, when the people have been carved, it is their duty to look for a covering. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, let me just go to our Facebook page and just pick up uh, last comments there. Ubaba uh, Ukfai again. Utiye, this uh, fatherhood has been taken out of proportion. Fathers compete with our Lord Jesus. How demand you guys compete with with our Lord Jesus? Our Lord. Our Lord. Our Lord. <laughs> they, they have missed the mark. 
Ah. People, yeah, people must understand what I do as the called of God. What you yes. are doing as the call of God, you yeah. are standing in for Christ. So I cannot mm. compete with the real owner of the company when I am simply a monitor. Okay. So, so yes. So as as spiritual fathers, we need to understand we mm. are monitors, but there is a owner of the class. It's like mm. in a school environment, when a teacher comes to class and picks me up and say, you are a monitor to look after other students. I'm mm -hmm. not the teacher. I'm not greater than the teacher. I cannot compete with the teacher. I'm operating on delegated authority to stand in and represent the, the teacher. So when the students hear my voice, they're actually submitting, not because it is me, but because they see a teacher's authority where I stand and speak. So people should understand as parents, they cannot substitute Jesus. They cannot be equal to Jesus. They cannot push Jesus away to stand in the place of Jesus. They are representing Christ. Hence Paul says, I follow Christ. Therefore, imitate me. In other words, I'm a man under authority. And because I'm under authority, I have authority to influence those who want the same authority of Christ Jesus. So that's spiritual parenting. Okay. Would you like to add something else, uh, Baba? Um, demand? I mean, um, uh, Maxim one. No, that's all good. Oh. Yeah. All right. So. I just like as uh, um, as we are wrapping up. If you are called to a particular office, is it possible to be uh, parented by someone who is called in a different office? Like, for instance, if I am called to a prophetic or an apostolic ministry or office, can I be parented by someone who is a teacher? Oh yes, oh yes. The okay. Two, you, you see, and that's another thing that needs to be corrected in the church. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Your parent does not have to be like you. Oh. They don't have to be you. Okay. Yeah. Your parents possesses the tools to stretch you beyond limits so that you become best you. So their experience in the field where they are. It's helping them to equip you in the field where you've been called. Now, people are mixing two things which are slightly different. A okay. mentor, a mentor should be someone who is in the same office, but a parent does not need to be in that office. It's like, for instance, mm -hmm. I'm a father to a lot of people who are evangelists mm -hmm. and I'm not an evangelist. I'm a father to a lot of people who are pastors, but I'm not a pastor. You, you, you see that? So, so, so the experience in, 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 in your office as a father, because people should understand there is grace that comes from God for being yeah. a parent. It is not just thing that you wake up in the morning and suddenly poof, now you are a parent. There is yeah. grace that is given by God. You, you see that upon, uh -huh. upon a person. That is why it's not everyone who has preached to people who becomes a parent to the people. Take for instance, the people in Corinth. Some of the people in Corinth were, were, were ministered to by Peter. Some were ministered to by Apollos. But then mm -hmm. some were ministered to by, by, by Paul. But Paul says to the Corinthians, all of them, he says, I have become your father because of the gospel. You, you see that? Yet yeah. some of those people were not people whom he has preached to. Mm. Okay. All right. I hear you. Yeah. I hear you. Yeah. Max one, would you like to add? I think, uh, yeah, I think it's like in the natural. Yes. I mean, uh, your children will not necessarily be like you. Yeah. But as a father or as a parent, you, it's your responsibility to design, actually, and learn or see who they are and where they should go 
and then bring necessary resources, bring them in to help them go their direction and mature and fulfill their call or whatever they have on the inside. So like, obviously, no, who you are right now, sis, is not maybe what your mother or father was, but mm -hmm. she was able to raise you, to nurture you, to bring things to you that will help you in your direction. So that's mm -hmm. a father or a parent. Mm -hmm. Mm, mm. All right. Well, I wish we had about three hours. You know, it's time <laughs> we have. <it. laughs> so I feel like we actually need a master class. <laughs> or even I like tell a, you, I uh, tell you. <laughs> because um, there's just a lot that, and, and I think there's a lot of confusion out there in terms of understanding the concepts, the offices, precisely because of what you're uh, uh, alluding to, demanded that uh, people have chosen to somehow, I think, distort information and sometimes others are lazy to dig deeper and understand these things. But in any event, a thriving in abundance a talk is here to try and uh, stretch people so that they can get to learn and understand how these things work. And hopefully as uh, uh, God uh, uh, opens doors, we'll be able to indeed host these masterclasses so that we can go deeper in terms of teaching and understanding. I'd like to take this opportunity to give you uh, your parting shots as and also maybe share your social media handles if you are active on the social media because uh, sometimes there could be people who might like to probably follow you or follow up with additional questions. Demand. Thank you, Sizoto. What what a transforming session. Actually, even Nati, you may think that we 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 are here as people who are transmitting information to others. We are also learning what you are triggering actually, you are even stretching us to go and search even more. Now, what I can say to people is that when we speak of parenting, we, we speak of a process wherein there should be discovery, number one. You discover one another. Two, you connect. Three, you stage a process because there should be an understanding and a full engagement and commitment to the processes by both the parent and the child who is being mentored and covered. And, and going through the process also, there must be reflections, time of reflecting on your journey, wherein you will need either to up your game or to water down because somebody is moving ahead of another because this is a step-by-step -step moving on, not just a connection for better platforms and better introduction when a person stand on podiums as it is happening in our days. And parenting has got nothing to do with controlling your sons and daughters. You are fathering them. You are helping them become the best who God has designed them to be, not to become your your servants forever. Let it be clear, even though there is an element of saving, but they are not servants. They are sons and daughters who are willingly saving their parent. Uh, and the people need a covering. It may happen that a person has had issues in the past with their parents, but that does not mean parenting is bad. We all need parents. I have mine. What a blessed man of God. What a man. I will always celebrate that old man. You know, and 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 God bless all the fathers who are there and continue to bless your work. If Facebook page gets in now, the YouTube that's book. Kim Christian Center. Just type that and you will get our, our, our Facebook, you will get our YouTube, and we will be able to assist in whatever way that we can assist. God bless. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. 
Amen. I think uh, what I can close with, uh, um, we need fathers. Mm. Uh, a lot has happened in the church where you find that sons have done things wrong and left fathers and, mm. uh, and things were not okay. Fathers were angry when that happened, you know, many splits. Uh, that have second place in the churches. But when you look in the, in the book of Malachi 4, you see the prophet speaking about that God will gonna send Elijah. Uh, as I will send you Elijah the prophets before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall return or turn the hearts of the children and the hearts of the children to their fathers. We reconciliation. Uh, fathers are people who are matured, uh, are people who are no more in competition, are people who understand themselves. Actually, we should understand sons better than anyone else. So now, yeah. if, if you are in competition with your son and uh, you are fighting your son, and your son leaves and you even curse him, uh, what's going to happen to the future? Because sons are the future, you know. If, if your son goes away with the curse, it means the coming generations are carrying a curse. Hmm. And we need this to be changed. We need fathers to, to start again embracing the sons. You know, when you look at the story of the prodigal son, you notice that the father, he always checked for his son, you no, know, mm. come. And he was the first to see him when he came back. And he was the first to embrace. Why? Because he had this understanding that this is the future. Actually, the son, well, when you read there, the son had lost everything that the father blessed him with because he left out immaturely mm. left his house or he's covering immaturely. Mm. So, so now we do need this to, to be done. We do need fathers to call and even go to their son, son, things did not go well when we parted. Let's reconcile, I need to release a blessing on you because when I'm blessing you, I'm blessing generations to come. We need that. We need the impartation upon our lives of the fathers the blessing of the fathers. Hallelujah. Mm. This is what is in my heart. And, and, and uh, right now, uh, a lot is not going well, uh, even in the church, because yeah. of this, this cracks that are all over, all over. We need fathers. Fathers, fathers are, are recovering. Fathers, you know, uh, are recovering. You find it in a local church, also, also in, a, in a regime. And, and nationally, and right now we need fathers to speak. We need fathers to speak to our, our governments. We need fathers to speak uh, to our cities. We need, we need fathers to give direction at what should happen. Fathers, they mm. care for the blessing of God. You know, mm. when you look at uh, Isaac, he blessed Jacob. He was carrying a blessing. So we can't go on. Generations can't go on without this blessing. We need them. It's their work is their responsibility. So I will say, fathers, return to your son. And also sons, return to your fathers. You know you have how you left. Go back, ask for forgiveness. Let's embrace each other. Hallelujah. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's- Amen. 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 And, wow. And this, wow. And this time, we need to stand up as a church against what is happening. Even Amen. against the, 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 the prophets. I think we've got, we've got a lot of prophets of death, prophets of doom at the moment, of prophesying death to the nation. This needs to be changed. Hallelujah. Uh, that's what is in my heart. Uh, a lot is still under construction on my side. What I can give out is my email address, simpiwedcmajola at gmail.com, should you want to follow up on something. Thank you very much. We are very much. Bless you.
Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm actually just like to, you know, we do, someone actually on Facebook was saying we do need to part two of this conversation or perhaps even a masterclass because you are touching as you are a closing Baba on something that it feels deep to me, uh, the sons and the fathers and the casings and the blessings mm. and I'm like, oh, okay, mm. are we still in I mean, like the cases even, wow. But in any event, I'm sure God will provide a opportunity for us to actually maybe have a follow-up or even, you know, delve more and deeper into this subject matter so that exactly we can be able to achieve uh, what Umatengwane wishes for. Because I think it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a legitimate cry and it's important because we cannot be experiencing what we're experiencing currently in the world, in the continent and, and, and in, in the country when there are people that uh, should be positioned to be giving some kind of um, a, 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 a advice a, a prophetically as you as you put it to to our leaders out there you know i remember the other time when we had a prayer where you were talking about the fact that the challenge is actually in fact in the body of christ because it's now the other way around when it should be the other way around this is why we have so many challenges in the world in the continent and, uh, and, and in our country. Gentlemen, I'd like to take this opportunity for giving me your precious time so we can have this conversation. And thank you so much to our viewers on Facebook. And of course, if you missed uh, this session, it will still be available on our Facebook page, which is Thriving in Abundance Talk. And of course, we are also available on YouTube, Thriving in Abundance Talk or, or Econ or Thrive Global. So those are our platforms that are available out there. I would like to take this opportunity to wish you everything of the best, uh, father, son, father, son. <laughs> and um, and have, um, you know, uh, uh, more, you know, talk more on this particular topic and many other topics out there that need to be, um, uh, that 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 we need to basuak for for the, the the viewers out there and and the body of Christ at large. Kamala Muzodwa, Kamsimang, Makoche. Thank you so much for joining us, gentlemen, and thank you to our uh, viewers on Facebook Live. Thank you. Zavola <laughs> Mkimanje. <laughs> what, what a session, what a session. Not yet doing a game. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, no, what a session, what a session. Yeah. And 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 my thing, uh, I'm 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 excited, I am blessed. You, mm. you know, the maturity and the depth that you have on the scriptures, it is alarming. I'm I'm blessed. There's a hope for this country. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I'm blessed. I'm hey. blessed. And yeah. uh, Sister, Thank you, Sister Sota, Thank she's you. just natural when it comes to to her and doing this. It shows that God has crafted her for this as a midwife. And sure. please, my thing, don't, sure. don't, 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 don't <laughs> shift away from what you are. You mm -hmm. are yes. consistent. The, the, the years that I've known you, you mm -hmm. have maintained the purity and the simplicity, yet the power of the weed. And that's mm -hmm. what I like about you. And you are yeah. a true man of God. Thank yeah. you. Bless man of God. Absolutely. <laughs> For being there. <laughs> <laughs> For such a time so as this. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you.